Hello and welcome to today's daily devotional. Bruce is in the middle of uh, traveling transit wise and cannot get to a studio or a camera or film on his phone even. So um, you have me today. And I'm very excited to share with you what God has put on my heart. We're talking about transformation. And whenever I hear that word, because of the movie Transformers, I always think of the Transformers, how they, um, um, when we first see them, well, often see, we portrayed in the movie, they're a car and they transform into the robot. And um, it's like they, they change their appearance. Well, transformation actually means a marked change in form, nature or appearance. A marked change in form, nature or appearance. So when we talk about what happens to us when uh, we have Christ in our life, he transforms us. We should then see a change in our form, our nature or appearance. Now you can see that so often in stories from the New Testament, from the Gospels. You can see the, the total change of someone when Jesus heals them. And I guess you see the outward healing. Often we don't see the spiritual inward healing, but you see the outward healing. You have someone who is a leper who has no longer leprosy. You have the woman who's hemorrhaging, who's no longer bleeding. You, you have um, a, you know, a little girl who died and is now alive. Total transformation, change of nature, change of the form that they were. But more importantly than human bodily healing, we know God desires spiritual healing. Because it's our spirits that live on forever. It's not our bodies. It's our spirits that, you know, because the spirits are us that are invited into this eternal life with God. He says we'll all be getting new bodies, whatever those new bodies might be. And But our spiritual selves will live to eternity. And whether or not we go to heaven or hell is um, part of our choice in life and then also then up to the judgment of God but very much on us do we choose good or do we choose evil do we choose God or do we choose the enemy and you might think it's not as drastic as that but in many ways it is but the the other there's a few stories in scripture where Jesus came and transformed people because of they were in his presence, being in his presence that he transformed them. And the same too can happen to us. And it, these two instances where Jesus, um, human and divine, these people were in his presence, but there's someone who was in his presence, but Jesus was just the divine Jesus. So when we come, uh, um, come across the divine Jesus um, transform or being in his presence, he can transform us in the same way. And that's exciting. That's exciting to know because God has no favorites. He loves everyone a hundred percent the same. So he desires to be gracious to all and to transform us into the best us that we were created in the first place to be. The first story is the woman at the well, the Samaritan. I'm not going to read the whole story, but it's actually in John chapter 4, verses 5 to 30. And if you've never read it, you should go read it. It's a beautiful story. And it's a woman who, as you read the story, has all these husbands, uh, whether or not they've died or they've divorced her or whatever it is, but she, you can hear this, this loneliness in this woman. And she's, she's looking for love. Why so many husbands? She's looking for love. She's thirsting for love. But you see her go to this well that Jesus passes by. And Jesus, it says, you know, Jesus had to go through Samaria. 
Some, um, Samaria was not a town that a lot of Jewish people would want to go through because they had different um, beliefs or opinions about God um, from you know the Samaritans to the Jewish people. And there often was this um, bickering and ostracization <clears throat> and you know I probably mean this between a lot of people in those from those different cultures. But it says he had to go through Samaria. I re often read that and I think he went through through Samaria because he had to reach this woman. He knew this woman every, it says around noontime, lunchtime, the hottest part of the day, this woman goes to get water from the well. Why does she go then? Because she wants to avoid the crowds. She doesn't want to, she wants to avoid the gossip about her life, about her, she, the big, you know, the things that she knows was said about her. She just wants to avoid it all and she wants to, in a way, stay hidden and um, she, she feels unloved. Even though she's thirsting and searching for love, she feels unloved. So she wants to stay hidden and goes and gets water at the well around noontime and Jesus is waiting for her. And he shares about, I'm thirsty, I need water. But then that, you know, if you drink from me, you'll never be thirsty again. But what I want to show you is, so she's hiding. She goes, um, you know, to the well by herself away from the crowds or when the women would normally go early in the morning to collect the women, to, to collect the water, because often the women did. That was their role, their job, their chores, if you want to put it that, like that. But then what happens is something happens to her in this transformation, in this being in his presence. Because in verse 28, it states, The woman left her water jar and went back to the city. And she said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? She's questioning, is he the Messiah? He knew everything about my life and he shared it with me. Come and see people. So, in the first instance, she's avoiding the village people. And in the second, she's going out to draw them to Jesus herself to say, come. Transformation, a change of nature, the change of appearance, but the change of nature within. We have another story, Zacchaeus, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, and it's verses 1 to 10. And, you know, Zacchaeus is a um, tax collector, a chief tax collector, so he was high up. He was very rich. Why was he rich? When he got money from the Romans because he was collecting the taxes and that was his, his job. He was employed that way. But he also used to take, <laughs> siphon off money from the, from, um, the people, even more for himself. And people didn't like him at all but he was a small man and he heard he heard that Jesus was coming and what does he do he decides I can't see him over the crowd you know if you're small and you're trying to look so he climbs up a sycamore tree so he can look down as Jesus passes by and what does Jesus do Jesus stops under the tree and looks up because he knows Zacchaeus is there. He knows Zacchaeus' heart. He knows Zacchaeus' life. And he says to him, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to come to your house today. What did Jesus tell Zacchaeus? I've seen you. I know you. Come down. I'm coming to visit you. Zacchaeus had never had anyone visit him. You know, they might have come visiting him, giving him money because they owed the, the, you know, the Romans or himself money, but not to visit him as a friend, visit him as a neighbor. Jesus saw through and through why Zacchaeus was the way he was. He was greedy because it's like, I've got to get, I've got to get because no one's giving to me. I need the love. And no one's giving it to me, so maybe money, money will, will make me feel satisfied. And what does he do? What does he say to Jesus? Zacchaeus stood there, so he must have come down from the tree and said to the Lord, 
Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. From Jesus recognizing Zacchaeus and talking to him, Zacchaeus has been transformed by being in Jesus' presence. Wow. Do you know that can happen to us too? And it does, it's often without us even realizing it. Then we have the famous story in the book of Acts about Saul's conversion. Saul who'd been killing Christians and he gets knocked off his horse. We don't know if it was lightning, thunder, um, whatever it was, but this voice from heaven cries out, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Jesus' divine presence was there. Saul didn't see him humanly, but he was transformed by the presence of Jesus. He was transformed, and you know, you can see an instant transformation, but then always there's that journey of transformation. That's that, you know, our, our lives are the journey of being transformed by Jesus. But do we allow us to stay, I guess, in the presence of Jesus so that we would be transformed? So that he could help our nature, our form, our appearance? God can do it to us too, for us too. He desires to. This transformation is something that is available to all of us when we're in the presence of Jesus. So why not put yourself in that presence more and more and more? Yes, you can go and sit in front of the Blessed Sacrament and you can go to Holy Communion and you can get the, all the different sacraments that we know where Jesus was truly present, but he is present too in our daily life, everywhere. Ask him to come and visit you. Ask him to come and reveal himself to you, to show you his presence. And be bold and ask him to transform you. Because he desires to. Story after story after story, Jesus says, I have come to bring you life to the full. And none of us have full life yet. So why don't we ask him for this fullness of life? Some of it can be external healing, internal healing, you know, a change in our appearance or form or whatever it might be, whatever God has for each and every one of us to make our lives full and full of him. So have a blessed day. And I know that I'll see you tomorrow because I know Bruce is in this transition period going to be a little while you know, a couple of days when he has to settle down and get back to that time zone of being, you know, alert and alive at the right times. So I'm very excited to share with you tomorrow again what God will place on my heart.